Today, I want to talk to you about a passage in Isaiah that tells us how the blessings of God and God himself can be to us like a river, like a stream, and like a mother. But let me explain what I mean. I'm going to read to you Isaiah chapter 66, verses 12, 13, and 14. We read this. For thus says the Lord, Behold, I will extend peace to her like a river, and the glory of the Gentiles like a flowing stream. Then you shall feed on her sides, you shall you be carried, and dangled on her knees. As one whom his mother comforts, so I will comfort you, and you shall be comforted in Jerusalem. When you see this, your heart shall rejoice, and your bones shall flourish like grass. The hand of the Lord shall be known to his servants, and his indignation to his enemies. Notice what he says here in these three verses from Isaiah chapter 66. First, he says, Behold, I will extend peace to her like a river. When the Messiah returns in glory and triumph, the peace of Jerusalem will be like a gentle yet powerful river that is never disturbed. If you've ever seen the flow of a mighty river, you understand the image. There is a calm, a glory, and a strength in the flow of a big river that just says, peace. This is the peace that God gives to those who turn to him. And then it goes on to say that God will turn the glory of the Gentiles like a flowing stream. You see, the promise that Isaiah gives here in Isaiah chapter 66, it doesn't end with Jerusalem and the Jewish people. There is a sense in which God's plan of redemption began with the Jewish people, in particular with the patriarch of the Jewish people, Abraham. God established his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and then with Jacob's 12 sons and their descendants. But it was never God's intention to restrict that plan of redemption to the Jewish people. Rather, through them, God would reach the whole world just like he promised in his very first words that he spoke to Abraham, recorded in Genesis chapter 12. Now, this was important for the Jewish people to remember, and sometimes they seem to forget it. Those who call themselves Christians today must remember the same principle. God blesses them and works in them so that he can bless others and work in them. We shouldn't think of ourselves as containers of God's blessing. Instead, we should think of ourselves as channels of his blessing, with it passing through us and on to others. So here's the third image. God also says, as one whom his mother comforts, so I will comfort you. God here spoke with supreme tenderness to his faithful servants. No one can comfort us like a mother, and God will bring that kind of comfort to his people. At the end of it all, notice this one from verse 14. The hand of the Lord shall be known to his servants and his indignation to his enemies. When the Messiah, Jesus Christ, returns in glory and triumph, for some it will be a great blessing, and for others, it will be only judgment. Those who put their trust in him, who have received his peace, those who receive his care and his comfort, these will receive the goodness of his hand. For those who push God away and reject the message of hope and grace delivered through Isaiah and realized in Jesus Christ the Messiah, the very sad news is that indignation from God awaits them. Friends, God gives you the choice. Choose wisely. Is it going to be the hand of God's blessing and grace or his indignation? Today, receive the peace and comfort that comes from the right choice. God wants to give you his peace like a river, blessing like a flowing stream, and comfort like a mother gives to its child. 
you can receive that from the Lord by trusting in him and the Messiah. He has sent Jesus Christ and trusting in him today.